Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In the intro, I mentioned that this video series would be much more in depth than my previous video series on the Nick collection. In that series, I did one video for each of the different modules in the collection. In this series, I plan to do two to three videos on each of the different modules. And as you can see, we're starting out with Color Effects Pro 4. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Color Effects Pro 4, what it actually is and what you can do with it, and how the workspace is laid out. In our next video, I'm going to talk very specifically about control points. Control points are a very powerful feature of Color Effects Pro 4 and Nick software in general. So it's important that you have a thorough understanding of control points. And in that video, we're going to access Color Effects Pro 4 as a Lightroom plugin. In the third video, I'm just going to process an image from beginning to end to show you how you would go about using Color Effects Pro 4 in a real world situation. And in that video, we're going to access it as a plugin in Photoshop. Now, as far as this video is concerned, it's more of an overview. And what Color Effects Pro 4 is, it allows you to add filters to your image. And those of you familiar with On One Effects or Luminar are very familiar with this type of photo processing. You just add a filter that does something very specific to your image. Now, all of Nick's software, all the plugins, use a top to bottom left to right workflow. So when you open an image into one of their plugins, you'd usually start over in the top left hand corner. And you can see here it says Color Effects Pro 4. And then it has all these buttons. And when we're clicked on all, we're seeing all 55 filters that are in Color Effects Pro 4. Now if you're a landscape photographer, you may be interested only interested in the filters that really have to do with landscape photography. If that's the case, you would just click on this button and these are the filters that are more applicable towards a landscape image. Wedding photographers, you might want to just click that button. Architecture, nature, portrait, travel, and so on. So per personally, I prefer to use all because I just look at them all and try to determine which one might work with my specific image. Now, if you find that you're using a filter a lot over and over, you could make it a favorite. It's super easy to do. Let's say you're always using black and white conversion. Just click on this little star. And when you do that, if you click on now the favorites button, you'll see that black and white conversion is in that favorites tab. So you could just favorite all your filters by clicking on the stars and they will show up in your favorites button right there. If you want to remove one of the filters from your favorites, just click on that little star again and it will be gone. So let's say I want to add a filter to this. And one of my favorite filters is tonal contrast. So I'm just going to click on tonal contrast. 
and you can see it applied it to the image. And if we look over at the right hand panel, we'll see the actual filter, tonal contrast, and you can see that it has specific sliders. The sliders that are in the filter are specific to that filter. Every filter will be different and will have different controls that do different things to your image. For the tonal contrast filter, you can see we have highlights, midtone, shadows, saturation. And you can notice too that the actual the sliders are moved. So it did something to the image. And specifically, if you look at the tonal contrast filter over here in the left hand panel and hover over it, you'll see that this stack of rectangles becomes active. If you click on that, what you're going to see are presets that are contained for that filter or included for that filter. So this filter happens to have four different presets. And when I applied the filter, it applied this first preset, the default preset. And if you want to try a different preset, just click on them in order. Here's strong, and you'll notice when I pick or click on one of the other presets, the sliders change in the filter itself. High pass and softening. So you could go through the presets and maybe you'll find one that works better for your image than the default one. If that's fine, great. If not, you always could come over to the filter itself and move the sliders and dial in the setting that works best for your image. So it's very easy to work with these filters. Now when you're done with the presets, just click back. And I mentioned that you could stack these filters similar to On One Effects or Luminar. So if you want to add another filter, you would go over here to the right hand panel and this little button that says Add Filter. Click on that and you'll see now we have an empty filter and it kind of closed up our tonal contrast. We could open that again if we want to by clicking on that little triangle right there. And if you close it again, um, you could just click on that triangle again. Now we're going to add a new filter. So we have our empty filter. And let's say that I want to add, I don't know, pastel. So we'll click on that. And now you'll see that we have the tonal contrast filter on top and the pastel filter below it. And I could turn either of them off or on by clicking on this little check mark that is in that box. And now the pastel filter is active because it's open. That little triangle is called an expose triangle. You could click on it to open or close them. And when the filter is active, you could go then go over to the panel and we'll go back to pastel and we'll click on our group of four stacked rectangles. And you could see that this filter has six different presets in it. And it started off with the first one, Cool Soft, and we could go through them, Cool Diffused, Natural Soft. And you can see as I click on these, the sliders in the right-hand panel will change. So you could pick on a filter you like. Let's say you like this, Natural Diffused. And you then, if you feel like it, or if you don't like that preset that much, you could come in here and then just... Um, adjust the sliders to your liking and I mentioned that every filter is different so you can see the controls in the pastel filter are different than what's up here in the tonal contrast filter so every filter will be specific to your image now we'll go back and we could just keep adding filters you just have to remember that when you add a filter click this add filter button first if you added a filter right now, like if I added cross-processing right now, it actually just replaced that previous filter that I had on there, the pastel filter. So when you're adding filters, remember to click add filter every single time. Now, below this, down here at the bottom, you'll see recipes. What you could consider is you're building a wall, a wall of bricks. And the filters are the individual bricks. And as you're stacking filter on filter on filter, you're actually stacking bricks on bricks and bricks, and you're eventually building a wall. And if you look at the recipes, what these are are a number of filters that are already stacked together to give a very specific look. Now, I'll click on this first one. It's called Black Gold. And when I do, I'll get a warning. Because I have filters over here already, it's warning me 
that it's going to replace those filters with the filters that are contained in this recipe. And I could click do not show again if I don't want to see this again and then it will just automatically do it or I could just click yes. So what it will do is it will add all these different filters to the image in this recipe. And you can see that it added a tonal contrast filter, a details extractor, reflector effects, reflector effects, levels and curves, and colorize. So it added a lot of different filters. And you could come down and you could just keep clicking on these and you could see that it will change the filters each time you do it. So the recipes are pretty powerful. There's a lot of different ones in here. You could create your own, and we'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, so if you have a number of filters you use all the time and you're always stacking them, you could create a recipe from those filters and that will save you a lot of time. You do that over here. I could tell you right here, save recipe. So you would click on that and then give it a name and then it will get added to the filter recipes over here. So it's very easy to use Color Effects Pro 4. You could um, make your own recipe of filters and really get in and out of the plugin relatively quickly. So that's really how the filters work and how you could use recipes. And remember, there's presets inside of those filters. Now, if you want to see before and afters, if you go up here, you'll see right here's a split screen and you would grab this little red line and you could see a before and an after. And next to that, if you click there, you'll get an over under with the before on top and the after on the bottom. You could click this little box in the middle and you could have it side by side if you prefer. If you click this first box, we're back to our original uh, view with the filters attached. And if you'd like to just see a quick before after, just click on this compare button and hold it in with the left mouse button. There's before, let go of the left mouse button, and there is after. Now, I mentioned in our next video, we're gonna talk very specifically about control points. You'll notice that each of these filters at the bottom has this little part, control points, and it has a plus and minus. And you'll see that each of the filters contains that. Control points, for those of you that aren't familiar with it or but are familiar with masking, it's kind of like masking. You could apply that filter to a very specific part of your image. And again, we're going to take care of that in our next video. So I hope you enjoy this series. I really do like Nick's software, and I hope that this series helps you better utilize it in your workflow. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.